Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to be looking at how to find the points of intersection of two lines where one of those lines is a parabola and the other line is a straight or linear line. Okay, so let's look at the situation where we have our first line given by the equation y equals x squared. And we all know what that looks like and I'm going to draw it on this graph over here. That is simply a parabola that looks something like this. And then I'm going to have a second line on the same graph because when we're talking about points of intersection, we're going to assume that these equations are on the same graph and we're going to compare them to each other. And we're going to be finding where the lines meet each other and see if they actually cross over at any point. So the second line I'm going to do is I'm going to do y equals 3x plus 18. Okay, so I've drawn the parabola y equals x squared. It's a parabola because we have a quadratic on the other side of y. And on the other one here, you can see there's no x squared. It's just mx plus b. It's in that form. So it's a straight or linear line. It has a constant gradient. And we're going, if I draw this line, it would look something like this. I'm going to make that the y-intercept. And it's got a gradient of 3. So it's quite steep. It's going to be something like that. And I'll extend this line so we can see what we're looking at. So let's say it goes there. Now, looking at these two lines together, we can see there's two points of interest. And they're called the points of intersection. They are the points where the two lines intersect or meet each other. They cross over each other at these two points. Here and here. What that means is that at this point and at this point, the two lines or equations have the exact same coordinate. And that means that I could just say that at that point here, this y... And at this point here, this x coordinate are exactly the same. So they share the same x and y. I'll get rid of that and we'll fill it in later with what it is. And also at this one, if we go right down here to the x coordinate below here, that is the same for both of those lines at this point. And I will extend this y axis for us so we can see where it meets up here. Okay. So that's our y-axis and we have the same y-point there. So the y and the x for this point are the same and the y and the x are the same for this point for both of these lines at two points. How do we find those two points? Well, think about what we're saying here. We're saying that at this point and at this point or for any two, if you've got any two equations, you're saying that there's going to be, there may be, we don't know for sure that there's a point of intersection, but if there is a point of intersection, we're saying that the y and the x coordinate are the same. In other words, we're saying at a couple of points here, at two points, this y and this y are the same. So let's make this y the same as this y. Let's, because we know that at the points where they meet, at those specific points, this y coordinate is the same as this y coordinate. We can see that, that they have the same y coordinate. In other words, x squared equals 3x plus 18. x squared equals 3x plus 18. That y equals that y. Another way of looking at what I just did is I've gone, here's this y, which equals x squared, and I'm going to say that I'm just going to say that that is exactly the same as that y, so I'm going to put that in this position because I know that those y's are exactly the same at the points of intersection. Now, when we look at this, we have a quadratic. And when we have a quadratic and we want to solve it, we take everything to one side and we make sure that the side that we take everything to is going to give us a positive x squared. So I'm going to take 3x over here and 18 over here to the other side. We're going to end up with x squared minus 3x minus 18 equals zero. Now we have a quadratic. Now, we know that when we have a quadratic and we're solving it, we are finding 
the, the values of x that make this left side equal zero. But what does that actually mean in the context of this question? What it means is we're finding the x coordinates of the points of intersection because we subbed in where the y coordinates are the same. Therefore, the x coordinates are also the same. So what you're doing by solving this is you are finding this point and this point on the graph. We're finding what x coordinate do they have? Because we know these two points have coordinates. We're going to try and fill them in. Right now, we're finding the x and that x. Okay, that's what we're doing for that point and that point. Okay, and you can do these questions without a graph. I'm just trying to illustrate what we're actually doing if you were to graph these two equations. So to, to trace back over quickly what we've done, we got the two equations. We solved them simultaneously. Remember, this was equation number one. This was equation number two. And we put one into two and we said, or we just made the y's exactly the same, however you want to look at it. Then we've said x squared equals 3x plus 18, taken everything to one side, and now we're going to factorize and solve it. You don't have to factorize and solve it, you could solve it straight away. How do you do that? Well, your next step could be to simply use the quadratic formula and sub all the values in to the formula to find the answer for x. Again, this is only because you've made everything equal zero. That's very important. But we know another quick way to do it as well, don't we? Because we have a trinomial. When, that's when you have x squared and x and a number. When you have all three things, all three components, then we can do the PSF method. So I'm going to do that for you. Even though we could do the quadratic formula, the PSF method is going to be pretty quick and easy if it works. If the PSF doesn't work, then you can go and use the quadratic formula anyway. So it's, it's a backup method and it's, a, it's basically a guarantee to find the answers if there are answers. And here there are going to be some answers because we can see there are two points of intersection. So PSF, what's our P? Well, the P when we have a quadratic set like this is the number at the end, including the sign. So that's minus 18. Our S is going to be minus 3. It's the number including the sign before the X term. Now, now I ask myself, what two numbers multiply to minus 18 and add or subtract to minus 3? And you always start doing PSF by looking at the P first. So let's ignore the S. What two numbers multiply to minus 18? Well, I have 6 and minus 3. 6 times minus 3 equals that. And 6 minus 3 equals 3. That's not negative 3, so that doesn't work. Now I'm going to try the other combination with 6 and 3. Negative 6 times positive 3 is also negative 18, but negative 6 plus 3 equals minus 3, and that's correct. So our two numbers are minus 6 and plus 3. Make sure you get the signs right. The negative has to be on the 6, and the, pos and the plus has to be on the 3 for them to add to minus 3. We don't want the other combination where you only get positive 3. Okay, so make sure you try both combinations. Now that we got those two factors, I can rewrite this quadratic. I'm going to rub this out now. So I'll show you what that goes into. So we figured out up here that the PSF, the two numbers were minus 6 and plus 3. So I'm going to rewrite this as x minus 6, x plus 3. The reason I've put these straight into our brackets with x's is because it is a monic quadratic. That means that there's a 1 before that x squared, which means whatever your factors are when you do PSF, you can put straight into the brackets next to the x value. You just put x and x there, and then you put those. You simply fill these in there, and you just have x and x there because we know that it was going to be 1x squared and x times x is x squared. So you can always pop them straight in. And then how do I make each bracket equal zero to make the whole left side equal zero? Well, we can make x minus six equals zero, which will give us x equals six, or we could have that bracket equal zero, which is x plus three equals zero. And then we take three to the other side, we get x equals minus three. Okay, great. What have we just found? We've just found that six, obviously six is talking about this point, is this coordinate. Both of these equations will hit each other at x equals 6. 
And also, they'll hit each other at x equals minus 3. So that point's minus 3. So you know minus 3 and 6 are the x-coordinates. Let's find the y-coordinates because we want the point, not just the x value. So underneath, I'm just going to simply write y equals and y equals. And remember that we can sub because they're points of intersections and they're the exact same coordinates. I could sub these x values into either of these equations. It wouldn't matter because they have the same coordinate at those points. So x equals 6, y equals 6 squared, which is 36. And x equals minus 3, y equals minus 3 squared, which is 9. Remember, the negative 3 is going in there as well. It's been squared, so it's a positive 9 at the end. Okay, so we know that y equals 9 when x equals minus 3. So in other words, this value here is 9. And we know that when x equals 6, y equals 36. So up there, we made it 36. And that's how you find the points of intersection between a parabola and a line. Thanks, guys.